Manuel Manny Pardo Jr. was an American serial killer in South Florida, born on September 24, 1956. He was former police officer who had previously been employed by the Florida Highway Patrol and later the Sweetwater Police Department in Miami-Dade County, active from January to April 1986. Often working with partner and co-defendant, Rolando Garcia. The former Boy Scout and Navy veteran began his law enforcement career in the 1970s with the Florida Highway Patrol, graduating at the top of his class at the Academy. But he was fired from that agency in 1979 for falsifying traffic tickets. He was soon hired by the police department in Sweetwater, a small city in Miami-Dade County. In 1981, Pardo was one of four Sweetwater officers charged with brutality but the cases were dismissed. He was fired four years later after he flew to the Bahamas to testify at the trial of a Sweetwater colleague who was accused of drug smuggling. Pardo lied, telling the court they were international undercover agents. Then over a 92-day period in early 1986, Pardo committed a series of robberies, killing six men and three women. He took photos of the victims and recounted some details in his diary, which was found along with newspaper clippings about the murders and a Nazi memorabilia collection. Pardo was linked to the killings after using credit cards stolen from the victims, and accidentally shooting himself in the foot during the final murder. After some brushes with law enforcement, including one incident involving lying to investigators. His position at the Sweetwater Police Department was terminated. In January 1986, Pardo killed his first two victims, Mario Amador and Roberto Alonso, with a 22 caliber Ruger pistol as he ordered the men to the ground. Then pumped bullets into each of their heads. Police reported Pardo also shot the two victims in the torso. Later that month, he killed a Haitian man who was a Miami-based anti Duvalier activist, Michael Millet, who he believed to be a police informant. Millet was a gunsmith who had previously supplied Pardo with silencers for his handguns. Rolando Garcia lured Millet to the car of Pardo's wife where Pardo himself was already waiting in the back seat. Once Michael Millet arrived and entered the front passenger seat of the car, Pardo fatally shot Millet in the head with a 9mm pistol. The car was later discovered to have been re-upholstered after blood was cleaned out of it. In February 1986, he killed two more victims, Luis Robledo and Opiano Lado during a robbery of their home. Pardo had four victims in April 1986 in two separate incidents. Two, Faraquin Taro and Sarah Musa, were killed over an argument about a pawn ring worth $50, and for refusing to buy Pardo a VCR with stolen credit cards. Pardo would later claim that he believed Queen Taro had marked him for death by dialing him number 8 seconds on a pager, a numerical sign for death in the Santeria religion developed in Cuba. Two others, Ramon Alvaro and his girlfriend Daisy Ricard, were shot to death as Alvaro failed to show up to several drug deals. Pardo was apprehended in New York City found in a hospital with a bullet in his foot that matched those found in his final victims. The injury occurred when during the murder of Daisy Ricard, after shooting her once, Pardo's 22 Ruger pistol jammed, so he bludgeoned Ricard with the handgun, causing the jammed round to discharge into Pardo's foot. Pardo maintained until his death that his mission was to rid Florida of its drug culture by killing, one by one, 
or in his cases, two by two, active sellers and buyers of drugs, admitting to at least six of the nine murders. During his trial, against the advice of his attorneys, Pardo took the witness stand in self-defense. During this portion of the trial, Pardo claimed I am a soldier. I accomplished my mission and I humbly ask you to give me the glory of ending my life and not send me to spend the rest of my days in state prison. Pardo acknowledged that he killed all nine victims, but claimed that all nine victims were drug dealers who had no right to live and that he was doing society a favor. Prosecuting attorney David Waxman, on the other hand, maintained that Pardo was a cold-blooded killer and, according to the Clark County Prosecutor's site, the state presented the case that Pardo and Garcia were drug dealers and were eliminating the competition. 24 years after he urged a jury to give him a glorious death, Miami serial killer Manuel Pardo shut his eyes, yawned and fell into an eternal slumber but not before delivering a final defiant homage to his military past. Airborne forever, the former U.S. Navy veteran said, adding an ode to his daughter. I love you, Mitchie baby. And so the former Sweetwater cop, who shot and killed nine people during a series of robberies of mostly drug dealers in 1986. He was executed by lethal injection. Pronounced dead at 7.47 p.m. at Florida State Prison, on December 11, 2012. Before Pardo was strapped to the gurney, he issued a neat handwritten letter, accepting responsibility for killing six men, but no women. He insisted as part of his war against men who were trafficking in narcotics. Pardo's death capped the bloody and bizarre saga of a man who joined the military and law enforcement before he embarked on a killing spree in 1986 that left nine people dead. Most of his victims were drug dealers, people who crossed him and potential witnesses. Pardo's demise is also a reminder of a decade in Miami, that was marred by scandals of corrupt cops who robbed, killed and were arrested for crossing the line into the criminal world. His execution was the third in Florida that year. Even after his conviction, Pardo maintained in numerous press interviews that he did more social good as a killer than he could have done as a police officer. His final statement was equally brash. In his one-page letter, he made no apology to the families of his victims. He simply claimed that he took the rap for the death of the women, because it made no difference whether he faced six or nine death sentences. Then, he boasted of his pride in seeing the New York football giants and the Yankees win so many championships and delighted in the rival jets doing what they do best, choke, crash and burn. They stink. Pardo also praised Spain for winning a World Cup title in soccer, and urged the country to keep the tradition of bullfighting. Then, he claimed to accept the consequences of his actions, and urged his daughter. Remember, Michi, you are airborne and hardcore. No tears. Now, I am ready to ride the midnight train to Georgia, he wrote. In the final hours of his life, Pardo visited with eight relatives and friends, and enjoyed a Cuban-style last meal. His last meal was roasted pork chunks, white rice and red beans, fried plantains with tomato and avocado, topped with olive oil. He finished with pumpkin pie and Cuban coffee. Outside, about 45 death penalty protesters crowded a field across from the prison. In Miami, the Archdiocese of Miami, which opposes the death penalty, held a vigil for Pardo. 
just past 7 p.m., with the U.S. Supreme Court denying his last-minute appeals. Seven loved ones of the dead were ushered into a small room facing the death's chamber at the prison. A glass pane separated them from the killer. The silence was cut only by the drone of a wall air conditioning unit. They watched, grim-faced and calm, as Tim Cannon, a corrections official, announced the final procedure was underway. Without incident, the lethal combination of drugs entered Pardo's body through a tube attached to his arm. Gaunt, bald and pale, he mumbled his last words, unintelligible to the gallery through the speaker system. Then he yawned, his eyes darting briefly to Cannon, drew a few last breaths and sank into sleep. His mouth fell open and, for the next 15 minutes, his life seeped away quietly. Finally, a doctor brushed aside a brown curtain. He shined a flashlight into the killer's eyes, checked his chest with a stethoscope, looked up to Cannon and nodded, pronouncing Pardo dead. Thank you for watching Death Row.